Hello, YouTubers. <laughs> <clears throat> Joe Kersey here on Friday, April 27, 2018 at 1500 in the afternoon Eastern Time. I'm going to have to wind that bad boy here shortly at some point. Cheers. Now, today has been a glorious day out on the porch for the most part uh, in sort of the state of maximum permitted undress. Although I doubt seriously, if somebody's seeing me from Worthington Road as they're crossing that bridge, they're not paying attention to what they should be paying attention to. Go back to your video game or your texting. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been very nice. Uh, we're you know, just in the high 60s, you know, perfect. So this morning, this morning, uh, this morning, this morning, this morning, uh, uh, Tony Pincham, uh, my UK friend Tony Pincham, put up his video about this uh, this nutter, uh, maybe even two nutters, <laughs> left a series of comments on one of his, I think it was in response to one of his videos, but maybe it was in response to some sort of Facebooky stuff he had done. Um, I never, never was quite clear on that. I'm sure he's going to tell us. Um, but that's good. Man. I like accuracy. Accuracy is good. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like. What can you say about, you know, these, these amateur theologians, uh, quote, in quotes, quote, theologian, unquote. Uh, it's one thing to give your opinion on this stuff, whether you're overtly bigoted or not. Uh, if you've read basically extensively in the relevant texts, uh, Ideally, some of which, you know, since a lot of this has to do with the New Testament, well, also has to do with the Hebrew, but, you know, at least some of the texts having been in the, one of the original languages, either Hebrew or Greek, uh, I, I have no, no real knowledge of Hebrew except for certain key words. Uh, but, I, you know, I've... I've, you know, I've been through my Greek, English, New Testament a lot. Uh, and uh, N.T. Wright uh, will cite uh, the Greek text a lot in his books. And, uh, you know, you go back and you look, and, you know, and then the, the, the church fathers, you know, uh, uh, St. John of Damascus in particular. Uh, excuse me. Then a lot of a lot of them are in the Orthodox Church. You know, Saint Simeon, the New Theologian, you know, Saint Isaac, the Stylite, or uh, Saint Isaac. Anyway, I don't know if he's a Stylite. There's one dude that sat up on a big pillar for years. Uh, I guess he must have been writing because he <laughs> he left a body of work. Um, so you know, if you if somebody's read. The Bible through several times. I've I've been through it five times, front to back, and then of course, obviously, some of the books over. Well, not over and over, but you know, many more times than five. Um, certainly in the New Testament, that's the case. Um, okay, you know, have your say. You know, um, this woman had a big heart on about. Uh, gays in general uh i guess her her current word of choice was preferences which of course is 
one of my uh, <laughs> you know, you've got three words that sort of send me off. You know. Preferences, uh, lifestyle. Tony did talk a lot about the lifestyle. And, you know, my favorite is proclivities. Now, my mother's, that was one of my, no, that wasn't my, no, my mother's favorite word is preferences. My ex wife's favorite word is proclivities. Your proclivity. Come on. Um, this ain't a choice, folks. Oh, yeah, I want to choose to live a way of life that's going to, you know, get me completely ostracized uh, throughout my early years and uh, make it a lot harder to get along with, you know, my career and this. Maybe not so much now, but it certainly was when I was growing up. Yeah, sure. That sounds like a reasonable choice. Um, the thing about all this stuff is that in the old, you know, in Old Testament times, uh, the idea of homosexuality, uh, let alone being gay, didn't even exist. It had to do with keeping the uh, genetic uh, herd intact uh, for reproducing the tribe. You didn't want, uh, you know, some guy going off, you know, making it with another dude when he could be in there making babies with his wife. Yeah, uh, yeah sort of like the desert, the desert imperative when you're beleaguered and threatened from all sides. And then in the New Testament, most of this stuff has to do with uh, Greek temple, you know, pagan temple uh, prostitution. as well as the Greeks' uh, well-known uh, penchant for, uh, you know, getting the, you know, the sexually mature teenagers uh, involved under what we would consider legal age now. But I don't think, you know, none of these, none of these things were, were what we would call gay. Uh, maybe uh, homosexual as a descriptor of just behavior, maybe in the Greek era, perhaps. Uh, but this, uh, you know, watch Tony's video. I mean, uh, this woman is uh, all well. It's your standard boilerplate. There's only about six verses in the entire Bible that deal with male, 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 male sex, man on man sex. Uh, I think there's only one that deals with woman-on-woman -woman sex, and that very obliquely. That one's in Leviticus too, actually, as well. Uh, uh, St. Paul, you know, sort of went on a little tirade there in the first chapter of Corinthians about, you know, temple, male temple prostitution. Um, Jesus never had a single word to say about it. He had a lot to say about how husbands and wives could, should conduct themselves toward one another. Now, he had a fair amount to say about that. But uh, as far as we know from what his recorded sayings uh, and statements are, you know, he... This never rose up on his radar screen, at least to leave a record for it for us. So, this woman was, you know, Tony sent me all, all the stuff. And I basically said, she's, you know, there's just no hope for this individual. You know, it's, you know, it's off to the knacker's yard for you, my lass, you know. I mean, sorry, old girl, you know, that's the end of the road, you know. Um, you know, actually, it's very interesting. Tony uh, said that he has another interlocutor, uh, internet interlocutor. Say that real fast, several times. Internet interlocutor, uh, who apparently has psychiatric training. I think physician, actually, you know, physician psychiatrist. 
And uh, he said that her cons constant use of ellipses, where you know, it's, it's not really, well, indicates a certain degree of paranoia. Well, I can understand why he said that. I very occasionally use ellipses when I'm writing, uh, but uh, with me, I use it to emphasize, not emphasize, just indicate that uh, it's like, what more can you say? You know, I'm sort of adrift or baffled. Uh, I don't think I use it in any way to, I rarely use it in the body of a message. Unless, unless, of course, I'm quoting, and then, of course, I use it as a traditional way where you put, you know, three dots in to indicate you omitted certain material from something you're quoting. I don't think that that's sort of not indicative of paranoia. Oh, yeah. Um... Again, you know, massively beautiful, nice day. I uh, got another package uh, for my, uh, well, well, I got another package through UPS today uh, for, uh, well, uh, I think there's, there's still two more items in this order to show up. They still haven't sent it through on my credit card yet, which I find interesting. Uh, they do eventually. They're really slow about doing that. I don't know why, but they are. So. Uh, okay. I, uh, no more real, and that's good. No more real developments is good. That's always a good thing. You know, we don't, <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't want a lot of adventures, you know. Uh, all right, so I'm going to say bye-bye, YouTube.